I'm so tired. <laughs> Alright, I'll start that again. I'm going to start that again. <sighs> uh, he's got his single seat apart. Oh! <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is three o'clock in the morning. I'm literally just leaving the workshop now to head back. Welcome to my lounge. I say my lounge is it's the LS400. It's like a lounge though, like sofas, these things. So comfortable, creaky leather as well. So I wanted to say massive thank you to everyone so far. The other video dropped a couple of days ago. Thank you so much to everyone that subscribed, liked and shared it and commented on it. I'm leading on from that. We had a comment on the video from Track Toys TV. If you don't subscribe to them, head over to their channel and subscribe. Good lads, and they're going to be doing similar stuff to us. So it should be quite good. Their comment was about the MR2 flying up the hill. So he got me thinking, well, I just as well go back and make a video on how I even got into hill climbing in the first place and how I ended up where I was with the MR2s because the MR2 was what kind of started it all for me with racing and driving quite quick in general. So basically around about 2005, 2006, bought a, well, bought my first MR2 Turbo. Um, I think it's Caribbean blue, but yeah, it was a blue one anyway. Um, my own experience up to that point in an MR2 Turbo had been my dad's from when he owned one, or he did he own one in the uh, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. He's owned a couple now anyway, but yeah, his, his first one, the revision one that he had back in the late 90s was, was a quick little car and that's that at that point was the sort of one of the quickest things i'd really been in i'd i had a 71 bay window camper that i'd passed my test in and then volvos and an old c-rage cavalier and things so nothing fast at all to suddenly getting into this mr2 with him and being like oh okay this thing goes around corners i didn't realize you could go around bends like this so that was when it opened up a whole new world to me of of like driving as such so yeah i can remember how insane compared to everything else it was that it handled you really felt the g-forces with it which anyone who drives mr2 turbos will know until you push it too far <laughs> fast forward a couple of years i picked my one up that became my daily i was driving it around to and from work but as with everything when you're into cars it doesn't stay standard it has to be modified so started modifying it making it quicker and quicker and quicker and then realized that at that point actually i can drive i was quite surprised <laughs> I'm actually all right. So I was able to drive. I was quite quick. So the natural progression from that was obviously to try and move on to something. So we roll on another year or so. Um, Dad and his friend were chatting about um, the racing that Dad used to do back in the day, the old the sprinting and things. So he said, well, we've got sprints around here over at Newquay. There was a uh, sprint called Sneville, and which doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. It was an amazing little, little circuit. They ran a lot of events in a year and... It was kind of like the go-to place if you wanted to start sprinting or hill climbing in Cornwall. The best place was St. Neville. So, got our licenses, got all the bits and pieces we needed. I'll go through all this again in a much more like in detail video of how to actually get into sprinting and hill climbing, especially down in Cornwall as well, because there's, there's so many events on like in Cornwall, or at least there have been in various years. People don't realize just how much motorsport happens down here because there is a lot of it. So I'll run through that and I'll do a, a little video of how to get your license um, and how to actually get into sprinting and hill climb, how to find clubs and stuff, especially if you're down in Cornwall, it's going to make life a lot easier for you. So I'll do that in another video, <clears throat> but we got all of our gear, everything we needed, time and struts on the car, numbers, all that sort of stuff. Got ourselves along to the first sprint. And in the meantime, I'd actually bought another MR2. I'd bought another a, a white MR2 turbo, which was the first car I raced. That one, we, I picked up for 250 quid with a blown turbo, had a CT20 sat around, so bolted that on, changed the exhaust and downpipe, wound the boost up to 1.2 bar. And I think um, back then there was a car club in Plymouth that had a rolling road day. So I took the car along there and it made 302 horsepower. So quite a pokey little car. Took that along, did some sprints, actually did quite well. And the first season of running that car, we only did half a season or so. First season of running that car, I got, um quite a few trophies so i was addicted by that point i'm like okay i like glassware and all this stuff it's quite good fun um and getting the recognition for being being quite quick so that was where the addiction started and 
we moved on from there. Running on from that year, decided the next year everything was going to be improved. So I just as well switched back to my blue car. I used the white car initially and yeah, I just didn't know how good I was going to be or bad I was going to be if I was going to crash or whatever. So jumped into the blue car, which I had already changed the suspension on, uh, modified the engine. I think I'm a little bit lost on this because so much happened in such a short period of time with the cars. So the, the white one I took off the road and there was actually a lad again from Plymouth. The fuck is that at three in the morning? Anyway, there's actually a lad from Plymouth that um, owned quite a nice MR2. It was a normally aspirated one. He wanted it turbocharged, so I stripped the white one down that I had as a race car, stripped it of the engine, rebuilt it, and actually put it into his car. And yeah, and I think that's still still going now. That was 2010. 2010, yeah, I think I built that car for him. 2011, maybe. And actually, not long ago, we had the car up here, and now it's gone off to wherever else. Um, but yeah, still running, stay, still same engine, still going strong. Good little car that. That was a that was a good engine. Anyway, digress there a little bit. The blue car had all the suspension on it, had all the goodies, and I can't remember if this was the point where I started wanting to go faster and faster. Realised I was catching up with the quick guys in the class sprinting, so rebuilt the engine. Um, I don't think I actually. Sorry, no, that's a lie. I didn't rebuild the engine straight away we bolted a few more mods on changed the turbo did a few bits and it was after pushing it for a few events that i ended up cracking a ring round or cracking a couple of ring rounds so we rebuilt the engine again ran on for either the neck the rest of that season or the next season but i got quite high in the championship i think i ended up coming third third second third fourth i don't know i was in the top 10 Anyway, I might even have been in the top five. I think I was in the top five, but don't hold me to that. Um, so yeah, I, wanted, I was pushing and pushing, and we were getting quicker and quicker. And the best thing, there was a guy called Steve Diamond. He, so he raced at St. Neville Sprint as well, and he was in, in an Impreza, and I was cutting the time down and down and down, closer and closer to him. And he was a really quick guy. He had beaten the previous class record. So I'm chiseling away, trying to catch his times. Um, and I got to... I think it was 0.1, no, sorry, it was, it was, he did a, I think his fastest time, or his class, the class record was a 116.19 in his Impreza, and I think I got down to a 116.29. Wrong. I think, I'm going to have a little look at the times, I, I, the times are still online somewhere, so I should be able to pull them up, but I got so close to taking the, the actual track, um, like, class record at the St. Neville track um, in my second year. So I was really, really stoked about that. Never quite made it. And then that year was the year the St. Neville closed. So never got to the race there ever again. So I never got the challenge, Steve. So Steve Diamond still has the A4 class record there at St. Neville. And I got so close to taking it off of him. And I just didn't quite manage it. So I was gutted for that. However, they were running another sprint down at Portreath. And I managed to go down to Portreath and we raced down there. And I was getting quicker and quicker down there. And I managed to nab the class record down at Portree, which still has, like stands to this day because, again, another year or so on, they stopped doing sprints down at the Portree track. So I still hold the the A4 class record. So I missed out on the Snevel one, but I, I managed to get the Portree sprint one. And Portree sprint, it was it was fast. You weren't allowed to film down there, unfortunately. So we, I don't have any footage um, of anything we ever did down there. But it was a really fast circuit. And it was really, really good fun. So, again, digressed, sorry. <clears throat> Moving on from that, sprinting with poor treat and everything. So the sprints I was doing quite well at. Now the hill climbs, that's that's another level. That is another level. Right, I waffled on far too long. And as a result, ended up with 25 minutes worth of footage. So what I'm going to do, split it into two halves. Just watch the sprints. Going to do hill climbs as part two. Thank you for watching this far. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in part two. Thank you very much.